So, <clears throat> yeah, give up. I awoke this morning, as I often do, contemplating the problem that a jury probably doesn't understand the distinction in burden of proof between civil cases and criminal cases. In civil cases where it's a, um, a balance of probabilities, which is the burden of proof, and in criminal cases where it is beyond reasonable doubt. And I often imagine myself in a criminal trial thinking it important to ask the judge to emphasize via the description and exemplify this distinction, the differences between the two, such that the, the jury understands and is informed. And so this morning I, I came up with the, my own example, which I thought was pretty useful. The, the implications of, of the allegation I make, that, that people don't understand this, is essentially we need to let more guilty people off, let them go free, if we want to hold to the principles of justice, to the principles of criminal justice and this obligation of beyond reasonable doubt. In the criminal system, well, in the justice system period, I think wherever there's a, a jury, there is an entitlement to, to use one's faculties and judge the character of a man to discern the truthfulness of his evidence, his testimony, say. This subjective allowance, this allowance of subjectivity, if you will, serves, I would say, in in practicality, in actuality, to be nothing other than uh, a granting permission to the jury that they can default to the civil mentality of beyond um, on on balance of probabilities a proof on balance of probabilities. I hope this will uh, become clear in the example I give. People don't want to let more guilty people off. People want an effective system that gets catches more guilty people. Well, you can want for whatever you want. <laughs> you can, wishing for and operating within certain well-founded principles are two separate things. If you want to hold to, if I am correct, and you want to hold to the principles of justice, the implication is we need to let more guilty people free. The answer to the problem of crime, then, becomes not only the justice system, but society, perhaps. And I would say, yes, 
that much of crime is quite simply from society not inviting much of society to the party. So the example I, I thought this morning I would give is, is consider the civil offence of not paying your TV licence in the UK. We have a, a, a government institution, uh, a public institution of the BBC, which, which we pay for um, through a civil levy, but kind of tax come something or other. Um, through a TV licensing fee, and it, um, the, the idea is that a, 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 a public-owned service can give good things to its society that the market might not otherwise do. Programs, news content might uh, be that bit more independent, and that's that's. Um, and, and various other projects that might not otherwise get made that society wants. I question that. At least the, the large picture of it. So, I've seen videos of people advocating not to pay one's TV license and one excuse um, that I've, I've heard and I, the penny has dropped that this is this is a good a good example of, of, of the distinction between balance of probabilities and beyond reasonable doubt is So the fellow says, right, well, he essentially says, if they did happen to catch me using my TV, um, watching live TV, he didn't phrase it quite this way, but, but, but it's better than I say it this way. I, I would say, oh, my dogs, oh, my cat, jumps on the, the chair and sometimes he's always playing with the, the TV gadget. Yeah, the cats murder for knocking things off. It's a known problem. And they, they must just happened to have um, happened by when my cat did this and, and switched on the TV. I wasn't in the house or something. Okay. And so the TV was on, but the offence is watching TV, and I wasn't actually watching TV. Now you can understand on the balance of probabilities that uh, that is just not going to cut no, no water. They're going to see it as more likely you're just avoid trying to avoid paying the fee. Okay, so in a civil realm, the balance of probabilities is a guy in the house, his TV's on. Yeah, he's willful. The, the probability of it being the cat that put it on is, is low. Okay? Unless, unless he has perhaps evidence of, look, my cat's always playing with the TV gadget video in it. Yeah? It's just, it's just a bugger. Yeah? Um, perhaps the balance of probability then would, would sway. But if that was the mere. alternative story of reality that's put forward in balance of probabilities it loses yeah he gets found guilty in the civil court and and and, and gets a big fine but move it say the the, the a 
offence of not paying your TV licence was made criminal, and there's been advocation for that, then such a alternative, which is entirely possible, must introduce um, reasonable doubt. It must. It's not... It, it isn't that um, you get to choose, really, about the character of the guy and whether this story is correct. <laughs> Although, in practice, that's what that's the point. Another point is that they would, and they'd choose that they didn't like his story. They, they thought he was just a scammer, just a trying to avoid his, his responsibility and so on and and uh, from from the tiniest things he could he could quite compellingly give this story and and people would still judge them him as a liar and just because they didn't want him to get off but if they was faithful to the the idea of beyond reasonable doubt then the point is, is the introduction of an entirely consistent, that is, no internal contradictions, alternative story, must always introduce reasonable doubt. And that's not a choice. Explain to the jury, the, the, the judge must, should to be fair to say, well, the witness here has introduced an entirely consist self-consistent alternative story. And I think they usually sum up and say, but you can make of that of what you want. But but they can't. If, if, if it's not like nervous twitching and, and like trying to remember a script, you know, like, like blatantly obvious um, such features that could um, possibly... <clears throat> allow even me to say yeah you could you could weigh his testimony as as, as lies but all things being equal is the point <clears throat> it must introduce doubt in the cr criminal case this entirely unfalsifiable um, consistent alternative story. Which leads me, though, to realise, because I've been studying human rights quite a lot lately, that in a sense, uh, thinking further about this issue of the TV licence, I've begun to understand that it's it's not the funding this way of a public service is not in accordance with law as the phrase goes and I'm conscious of, of the fact that these days I, I, I'm as, as they say um, a man with a hammer only sees nails, yeah? You know, I, I have this hammer of the human rights principle and you, you could argue that I, all I, I want, I'm overusing it. And I, I'm sure plenty, if, 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 if this was to ever become an issue, might argue that. But I think that I'm correct in my analysis and my understanding that the implications of the Human Rights Act is, has far yet to be understood in its broad, re, broad um, far-reaching jurisdiction um, and scope was the word I was looking for.
So let me explain. Human rights law demands proportionality. And if it's a civil case, we're in... Um, it's a contractual issue and, and for services say it's surely not proportionate you you find me um, with my TV on and it's not proportionate to impose a, a huge fine when you know I could have had a you know somebody could, I, I could largely not use it for watching public broadcasts or, or live broadcasts as the case may be it's any live broadcasting even though there's only one public service I could just use it watching my computer my um, DVD um, movies and so on and but somebody could say, "Oh, you're gonna love this. Have you have you got BBC One on this great programs on? And this one day, and you, boom, you 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 cop for the whole lot, so to speak. And and that doesn't seem proportionate. I think it could be argued. Um, and so I don't, but I don't know how the fine system works, but. I, I certainly think if we want to, I think um, we probably should have a public news service now, um, and it should be better. M more readily seen to be independent of the government. And it should be funded by taxation such that nobody gets to you know uh, not pay rather than this licensing idea just doesn't seem uh, a good a good thing so that was that was the other thought